So Mark, this is my detached garage. Use it for a lot of household projects, woodworking, you know, hobbies I like to do. Yeah, nice space. The neighbor's got a dog. Yep, he's a bit loud. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so here's the, what I wrote you guys in about this big hole right here. Okay, so it looks like maybe an old vent or something like that, but as we all know, Having a hole in the house is never good. Water infiltration, uh, rodents. You know, it's funny you mentioned rodents. A squirrel actually managed to get itself no in there and caused a lot of <laughs> havoc in the garage. I bet. Simple enough with the right tools that I can show you how to do it, and then, you know, you'll have some knowledge. Sounds good. All right, let's get some tools and get going. Okay. All right, so as you can notice, the hole is about a brick wide and two brick high. Uh, it would be tempting for us to just slap those two brick in and be done with it. Uh, but look at this. This is what a, we call a running bond pattern. Mm -hmm. It's just brick overlapping brick. Okay. It's a most common brick pattern. Uh, so what we're going to do is just cut these brick out. And as we put them back in, we'll mimic that brick pattern and we'll be done. Okay. What we're going to do is use an angle grinder that's attached to a dust-free vacuum to keep the dust down. So one of the reasons the dust collection is very important to what we're doing is the silica dust that's in this mortar. If I use this angle grinder without the shroud and the HEPAVAC, the dust would be all over the area. Can it be hammer and chisel at the same time? Uh, we could hammer and chisel, but there's so much tension on this wall that if we do start banging it, we might make a crack. We don't want to do that. So where do you get these tools, Mark? Well, I happen to own this setup right here, but you can go to a home center and rent them yourself, which is probably the way to go. So all I'm going to do now is take a dry brush, get the dust off, then I'm going to make a pass with a wet brush and really clean it up nice. Now we're ready to put the wall back together. Uh, we kind of lucked out. This brick is very common, so all we did was a quick internet search, found a couple brickyards, went over with a pitcher, voila, we got it. The mortar, pretty much the same thing. That's a standard gray. We picked that up at the home center. So now we're going to mix up and throw the brick in the wall. Okay, let's go. All right. So what consistency does this need to be? So we're looking for maybe an oatmeal type consistency. All right. So all we're going to do here, Tony, is spread the wall. So Tony, what we've done is we've put the bed joint down. I'm going to bang it like this. This is what we call a furrow. It just kind of picks the mortar up a little bit high. That way when we set the brick down, it'll settle where it's supposed to. So it's very important to do the right amount of mortar because when we lay the brick, if it squeezes out the back, it's going to cause blockage. And if there's ever any water on the back side of this wall, it will never make the weep hole. But one of the most important things we're going to do is what they call a head joint. We just want to make sure that entire thing is as full as possible. And then whip it right around. Just want to wiggle it down in place. We're going to do a little tap just to make it tight. I'm just going to scrape the extra mortar again. Again, a little tap. I want to hit it back, make sure it's tight. So as you can see, this is a narrow space right here. It's much too small for my big trowel. So what I'm going to use is my pointing trowel, which is much smaller, and it's going to allow me to get in between this brick and that brick. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use a flat pointer. 
so we can push the mortar as deep as possible to the back. So this is just the final point. And again, we're using a joiner that's gonna match the existing joint work. And then in about 28 days when the mortar cures, it should match the existing pretty well. While doing a patch job, you have to make sure that you push the mortar in as far as possible because you don't have the opportunity to lay a bed joint the way you normally would when you're building a wall. We're going to let this set up for a minute, then we're going to take a brick brush, brush it down. So now for the finishing touch, we're going to slick the joints. All right, Tony, so it looks like we did a pretty good job matching the brick. You can see the mortar is still a little bit dark, but three or four weeks from now, that dark mortar will blend in and turn gray just like that. Mark looks great. Doesn't look like there was a hole in there to begin with. And no more squirrels. No more squirrels. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.